Okay, folks. Happy whatever the f day this is. Thursday. <laughs> well, I got a chance to sit down and do some more airbrushing. Last time I got it, I was not able to finish due to a jam session. Of course, I can't really complain about being a jam session because it didn't happen after I was... It didn't happen until I'd already been airbrushing for like four hours, so not really a complaint. But we will see how good a job we did in cleaning this. And I probably should have named what this episode is after I do the episode because it could be one of those situations where um, I'm planning on airbrushing Olive Grun. I didn't feel like putting the umlaut in there. You guys can figure it out. I don't know what the code is for umlaut, but it has an umlaut over the U. And um, that's what we're planning on doing is airbrushing the green that we couldn't do the other day because it jammed. So I went and I did something kind of cool. I found something pretty interesting. And, um, you know, it's I, I don't think there's a lot of folks that say, for instance, when you're talking about painting, that they talk about how Games Workshop does not do people any favors by showing what their stuff looks like finished. In other words, you buy, you know, whatever. I mean, um, these guys could do the same thing. You know, here is a paint set that I have from Ammo Mig AK. I don't know the difference between them. Honestly, they're all the same thing. They're all the same, but they're all different. And um, they're all the same. Th and, and it shows some... Flames of War style vehicles. Here's some Flames of War dice, I would imagine. And uh, Games Workshop does stuff like this. It shows things that are like spectacular. And you're like, oh man, I can't wait to get my hands on something like that and make them look the same. And then you look at the back and you're like, oh my goodness, it looks so good. And then you go and do them and you're like, what the hell's wrong with me? And some people say that that's a bad thing for uh, Games Workshop to do. That they... Um, um, that they lead people astray or something like that. I don't necessarily agree with that, but I will tell you one thing that paint manufacturers, I think, that do something that's not very user-friendly. And that is, they reinvent themselves with other colors. Like for instance, um, and I've talked about this before on my show. Let me make sure this is pointing the correct way. There we go, this should be going like this, and this is like this, okay, cool. And, um, Way back in the early 2000s, I sold uh, a bunch of my 12400 scale ships. I sold nearly all of them. I kept like one or two. I just didn't like how they looked anymore. And instead of just taking that money and just playing with it or ended up using it for something else, I invested, reinvested it back in the hobby. And um, I had, um, well, nobody's here except one person, one lurker. I'm going to put this on pause. I'm going to come back and bring something that I should have brought with me. All right. Hold on one second. I will be right back. Okay, so uh, what I reinvested back in the hobby, and what I meant by that is, about the same time, there was these paints that were coming out called Vallejo. And what I really liked about Vallejo point paints at the time, and it was, maybe somebody else did it as well, but they had these eyedroppers, which is really handy because you don't waste a lot of paint, it's not drying on you. Uh, the way I paint, I don't use a whole lot of paint anyways. And I really liked them. And I'm like, and I like how the paint behaves and all that and I'm like well why don't I just go and buy the whole set of Vallejo paints so what I did is at that time the place I used to order from a lot was um well let me just look on here where is Brookhurst Hobbies it's at the bottom here um starting a bit early yeah yeah let's get it done 
I got people that are, I got some girls, I got my daughter here for a visit and her friend and they're out right now. I was like, let's get some stuff done. So, um, Brookhurst Hobbies used to have it and you could print out some of their stuff back in the early days. What is this? 2003. You could, let's see if I can get this, the lighting on this, right? Maybe this light is not helpful. You could print out basically every paint they had. And what I did was when I got them, I put a little color swash next to it. This is the actual paint on the white paper background. Um, and I think when I started, here's one, here's an example. I would paint the ends. It's not very useful because now when I store them, I store them like this. I don't store them like that. So it's easy to see kind of what the color is. And you still have to do a little bit of searching. But way back in the day, just to make sure I didn't miss any, 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 I went ahead and, and, and I may have actually purchased these now because I haven't updated this in a long time. Now I use a, a program called Paint Rack. Um, but, um, you know, like this one, every, every color's on there. And I'm like, you know, at $3 a pop, it's expensive, right? And I, the only reason I did it was basically free because I sold my stuff I wasn't using and I reinvested it and put it into the Vallejo paints, okay? The problem is, this is about 2003. I don't know when Flames of War came out. But when, let's say Flames of War came out around 2005, 6, 7, 8, something like that. They decided to go in cahoots with them and um, release a bunch of Flames of War colors. And, and then they also released um, some Panzer colors and other things. So I no longer have the whole line. And it's not that I want to have the whole line, but sometimes you'll go and say, hey, what color should I use for that? And even though they have a perfectly good representation of what the color might be here, don't, they will reference a Panzer colors thing or a Flames of War color or something like that. And it could very well be one of these colors that is already here, that's just not reformulated. Or maybe it's a slight difference. So it's really annoying. Um, it's even more annoying with AK because AK has ammo paints, they have MIG paints, and they have AK paints. And they're all the same company. It's almost kind of like, you know, Ford, Mercury, and then you've got another thing that's also a Ford product, but they're, they're even closer. And I, I don't understand what is the relationship with each other, but it's very difficult, for instance, to find. If you look, say you like this, where is it? Oh, here we go. This is the first set I got by AK. By uh, AK, yeah. Um, let's say you like this set. They have probably AK slash MIG slash ammo, all of the above, have at least six to seven to eight different Panzer color sets. They have this one. They have one that is uh, what they like calling um, modulation set that just has Dunkelgelb colors in it. They have another one that is just uh, 37 to 44. They have, it, it just, it makes your head hurt. And a lot of the colors are already in here. So one of the things with it is that, you know, it's sometimes it's difficult growing up in the 80s that you can buy some of these colors being the way that they are. Like for instance, the green that they happen to tell you um, is olive, olive green is the color that they tell you to use is and it's really really dark and uh it's actually not this dark it's very pale looking um it's not the rosetta olive green it doesn't have a lot of oomph green and um you know this stuff came in paste form in real time in, in one to one scale it came in i think it came in tens and they would cut it with whatever they had for thinner. It could have been fuel, it could have been dirty fuel, it could have been dirty oil, it could be, you know, they're all, they were oil based. So, um, you know, any of that kind of stuff. So, I always have my doubts, and in trying to, trying to get, wrap my head around everything, and I actually made a purchase today, nothing big, but something that's coming into the mail about aircraft. I've got a couple of aircraft coming. Um, one of them I'm getting because it was just too damn cheap and it'll be here tomorrow. Um, and then another one that should be the first aircraft I do. And I'm not going to tell you what that is, but if you pay attention to this channel, you should know what it is. It's the very first aircraft I built. We're going to build it again and do it the correct way. Um, 
But in doing that, I want I didn't want to go and buy more paints because I, I literally have hundreds of paints. Okay, so um, I decided to check out this place, um, and I found this real colors from AK conversion chart. I gotta hit this at the right angle. Maybe I should turn this off. There we go. A little bit more visible. It's a conversion chart, and basically it lists um, a bunch of colors. The um, the BS, the FS, or the RAL equivalent, and then what it is equivalent to with Mr. Hobby, Tamiya, the Yeho, um, a company called Hataka, Hata, Hataka, 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 probably, uh, Humbro, Model Master, which is defunct, no more, and Life Color, and just to kind of compare the things. So I came across this because aircraft are coming, and I. I'm sure I have some of these colors. I have this prepared. It's really cool. You can look for it. Uh, I believe it's called um, AK Equivalent Chart or something like that. You can download it for free. And it has paints other than AK. And I think the AK paint is here as well. So just to kind of compare, you know, okay, well, what color do they think you should use for olive green? And they gave me a Vallejo equivalent. And I don't have it with me, but I do have it here. So I looked up the code of what RAL 6003 is, right? And it's called, it's just called olive green in the AK color, and which is exactly what it's called under Vallejo, and I'll show it to you. And it's 867.82. It's this color right here. Uh, 67. I don't know if that comes out okay. 860, which one is it? This one? It's a light ass parrot type color. It looks like a freaking parrot. So I'm like, I'm been, I'm been pretty happy doing things with the dark green I was using, which was this dark green. It's dark. It still has some greenish properties to it, but I'm like, all right, we're gonna do this right. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna rock the boat a little bit. And how I'm gonna rock the boat is, I'm gonna take this light ass color, this light ass green color, and I'm gonna, you know, say this came in a tin. Say I'm some, you know, Panzer crew, and it came in this tin, and I got nothing but. Dirty oil or dirty fuel to mix it with. I'm going to mix some. This is the AK color that it says to use for um, for the uh, for the um, for the paint. And I'm going to mix it with a little bit of brown. And let's see what we get. You know, I use it for paint. Yeah, it's too. You never see a Panzer. You do, and it doesn't look right. Okay. Um, you usually see the green, the green on the Panzer is similar to almost the, the top of the Panther there. It is just, you know, it's a darker color, but it's kind of like a, a mid, mid, slightly darkish green color, not this parrot color. So I'm like, all right, I'm perfectly happy using this, which is what I was using, okay? And, um, but I'm like, let's give it a shot. Let, let's, let's pretend I got this stuff in a tin, um, and I'm gonna add a little bit of brown to it. So what brown did, did I bring? Well, um, I thought about it out here. Something that looked like oil that was also AK. Here it is. From the Russian line, Russian brown. And this looks rather filthy, okay? So that's what we're gonna do. I'm only gonna add a little bit to it. And uh, I'm probably just gonna mix it here and see if it's even close. But what I came to realize is sometimes you just have to go with your gut, you know? Sometimes you just have to go with the paint that you think it is, you know? Sometimes things just don't seem right. So, first thing, let's put this airbrush back together and see what kind of a job I did cleaning it. Always the first hurdle. Okay. 
And I brought my hand sanitizer out here. But that's what we're going to do is we're going to do the green on these vehicles on the half tracks. We got the Panzer IV stuck back. Basically everything that I couldn't finish the other night. Now I already gave the, the brown wash to the other vehicles that I finished and it looks, it looked really nice, but that's something I can work on the weekend. I really don't want to fire this up on the weekend and it's not particularly loud, but my wife hears everything. So as does everybody else's wife. It's their compensation for being really bad at directions. They hear stuff that hasn't even been said yet. I, on the other hand, can't hear shit, but I never get lost. <clears throat> All right. That is the bigger one. And we'll put the smaller one out. I left some uh, hand sanitizer in here to make sure we got all this stuff melting out. It must be genetic. It must be from a long time ago. Women had to have this great hearing because they'd be at home taking care of the house. And when they, they thought they heard their husband leaving work, they'd start getting dinner ready. <laughs> Come on! You got to laugh about shit like that. I know lots of guys that cook. I'm not one of those people. If it was up to me to cook, we'd lose some weight. <laughs> I can't cook and do all this anal retentive stuff, you know? All right. We're going to see if this works, if I cleaned it properly. Let's put the needle in. And the cup. I have my own domestic duties. They just do not involve cooking. Um, I like to do the laundry and fold things in my own unique manner. <laughs> but I have gotten better. But I do do, but I do do the laundry. I don't mind. Except sometimes I have to do some of her tops. And they've got like this shelf thing in there. And like I turn it around like 50 times. Like which side's inside? Which side's outside? It's like, you know... Women's clothes. Like, who's the, who's the person that decided, like, we'll do men's buttons on one side, but if it's a woman's shirt, we'll switch the sides the buttons are. Like, you, you just didn't have enough on your plate, you know? Like, like, why even bother? Pick one and let it roll with it, you know? I mean, making shirts for left-handed people makes more sense than, we're going to make female shirts all one way, you know? And all male shirts the other way. It doesn't make any sense. The best I could make you was some Kraft mac and cheese microwave chicken. There you go. You're my wingman. You're just like me. My dad couldn't. My dad does even wor did even worse than me. You know. Um, my dad did even he he couldn't do anything. It's just just a generational thing. You know, my my dad was born in the twenties, so you know, just different times. But I never go hungry. I can assemble the hell out of shit. I can assemble a salad sandwich. Of course, when she makes a sandwich, it's better. Because I'm like, you know, I'm like, let's eat. You know? All right, let's fire this thing up. So you, you won't see me doing a cooking show. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> 
Plus, it's a comedy. I think it's just like, I don't think it's worth my time. Not that I don't appreciate it. Oh yeah, I'm not a, let's eat steak and potatoes and board. Oh no, no, no. I like complicated stuff. I just don't have the patience for that and this, you know, so. And I'm a fast eater. So why spend an hour cooking something I'm gonna gobble in three minutes and then spend 30 cleaning up? Bad use of time, folks. Bad use of time. All right, let's get a brush that, um, these are like the school brushes. Like, they have to do school stuff, and they're out here. So they're not, they're not worth a damn. Let's make sure this is thing is... Well, I'll tell you the first thing that's a problem is... I got this thing at like 55 PSI and hardly anything is coming out. Well, let's see how this does with the Jesus juice. And I got me a new container. So if you think a water bottle is nice and flimsy that falls over all the time, how about this mother right here? Like, boy, it's really out of perspective. It looks like it's 10 gallons. So. Yeah, it's still, uh, let's open this out. I'm going to pull this out the other way. There's nothing in it, so. We're going to need some paper towels out of here. Said I probably shouldn't have promised what we we're going to do because who knows if we're even going to be able to do it. So I went to the model meeting on Tuesday and um, I'm enjoying that. Lots of folks are really into history there. But the one thing that surprised me is I think I'm the youngest guy there. Except what doesn't, that's not what surprised me other than there's, there's a guy that brings his son there. He's definitely younger than I am. He's 13 or so. Um, you know, I'm 52, going on 53. I mean, I feel young, but there's a lot of older people there, and they weren't they weren't airbrush friendly. And I'm not really an airbrusher. This is new to me. I don't have issues like this when I'm painting my hand. You know. Okay, we got enough pressure there. That isn't the issue. Let's get, let's get this thing out right here. But I don't like editing any of this stuff out. I'm not worried about I'm not worried about doing everything perfect and showing my humanity. You know? It's too much effort to um Something ain't right. All right. It's too much effort to edit things and just to pretend you're some kind of a fucking god. You're still going to do things wrong either. Is that little piece stuck in there? How very, very strange. There we go. 
So to wiggle it out now. And this thing comes with a magnifier so you can look through it. I just have a window behind me and that's good enough for me. You get too complicated like that, I don't really know what's going on. Let's get this stuff in here. But yeah, they're like, oh, I, I thought your stuff was hand painted. I said, it is. I just get it, uh, I just airbrush, really, the, I'm just doing this camouflage just because I could do this camouflage hand painted. As a matter of fact, sometimes it was. Sometimes it was, they painted it with mops. Whatever they had handy. You know, whatever they could come across. Brooms, mops. You've all seen some camouflage schemes that the Wehrmacht used. That's like, man, what'd you do? Fail kindergarten? Yeah, well, some people failed kindergarten. All right, so look at this. We, um, we got some hand sanitizer in there, and we're getting some of this gunk out. That's what the problem is, is we got some gunk in there. And that's without me assembling it. There we go. There's some light through there. Now, I'll put some of that there. Airbrushes. Needle first. probably have to blow it out a couple times and then we'll be good to go. And that's without me as assembling it, uh, leaving it assembled. Okay, that's better. Well, let's see how we do with uh, some liquid. Yeah, we still got some cloggage. Like I said, the main thing I said the other night, one of the main, the most important thing about airbrushing is make sure you don't have any fucking plans. <laughs> don't have any plans because you don't know how long this is going to take. So if you're on a time crunch, don't airbrush. You've seen interesting ones where they just put some dunkle gelb over the standard gray. Most vehicles were fit with early on. I have mixed feelings how it looks though. So I hate to burst your bubble. But that's not Dunkel Gelb. What are you talking about? That's actually, um, it's in the other paint set. It's it's a different it's a different color they used in 1942. They experimented with it. And I don't know if the experience of going to North Africa was a catalyst for it, but obviously the North Africa vehicles were painted gray when they got there, and then they got weathered by Mother Nature, and then they added, there's a couple colors that were in North Africa only, but in southern Russia in 1942, they started doing stuff like that. They, they started, um, they painted some gun, some uh, vehicles uh, yellow, just experiment, and uh, the yellow they use is not Dunkelgelb. It is, um, it's less, Dunkelgelb is greener, green, more green. It's more like a, it looks like an Africa core type color. But, um, yeah, I know what you mean. Um, I, I actually think it looks okay. They also experimented with brown. Uh, they had some early war stuff in brown and even pre-war stuff with brown. And then they brought some of that stuff back in 1942. 1942 was just kind of like their year of experimenting with stuff. Um, and... Um, And, and some, some units, when they were rebuilt for the big push in 42, uh, Gross Deutschland, um, the 22nd Panzer Division. The 22nd Panzer Division didn't take part in any of the 41 stuff. It was ready to go. It went south in 42. It was kind of a new unit. And it was the last unit that was equipped completely with Panzer III, uh, with Czech 38s. And it also had, as far as I can tell, most of their vehicles in that, in the sand color. Which is, um, I'll tell you what, I'm going to go grab it right now. I'll tell you what it's called. It's in my other set that I don't have down here. It 
it's called Sand Growl. Sand Growl. Seven, seven, RAL 7027, 7027. Right? Sand Growl. Oh, and Gelb Brown. You know what? They probably did use Dunkel Gelb to some degree, but not until 43. But in 42, that's what it really take off. So you've got stuff like those vehicles on there. It actually looks a little better than Dunkle. Dunkle Gelb's not very attractive. To me, anyways. Um, when it comes out of the factory, it just looks horrible. It looks horrible, and then it fades, and then it looks better. In my opinion. All right, so let's run this through once more and see if we can't get any of this extra stuff on here i don't think it's the the i don't think it's the um i think it's the primer honestly i think it's the primer how it is how it's doing it but the 22nd panzer division like i was saying is it's as far as i can tell all of its check 38s were painted that sandy color and a check 38 looks weird in sandy color it really does and um you know and a check 38 was an okay tank, but in 42, it's a piece of shit. It's, you can't, you can't do anything against a T-34 with a, with a check 38. You really can't. You're kind of up a creek. All right, let's try this. No. Screw you too, pal. Oh, it's the cord, the hose. One thing I've noticed is when I put readers on, I've turned into like a fucking mole. I can't see shit. I've got super tunnel vision with the readers. So I do klutz. I'm, I'm not generally klutzy. When I got readers on. I'm like a klutzel still skin. All right, we powered up. Let's put this all the way in. Well, there's something I've never done before. Put the needle in backwards. See, I tell you, I'm just like, I'm like a freaking mole. There we go. And it's pushed all the way in. You want to be able to frick the spray all the way in. And the wife will be like, what's that wet spot out here? All right. Well, it's clear. We're not doing that with real paint. Okay. I think we're in business. Because it's pushed all the way in and we're getting flow on there. Now. For good measure. That is a ton of pressure in there, but we want to make sure that we blow anything out that we can. Let's put that there. That's probably a good spot for that. All right. Always have your tan with at least one other color. I find it too bland alone. Well, I've got one barter that I'm going to do all by itself, and we'll see how it turns out. We're going to see how that turns out. So. Let's do a little olive grun experimentation. Uh, we can use this side, I guess. Um, I'm gonna take see if I have something it doesn't absorb like a mofo. This absorbs like a mofo. I mean, so this does not absorb at all. I want something a little bit more absorb absorbent. <laughs> To the 
Yeah, this is, I don't know if you guys are getting true color. If you get all of the olive groom that comes in here, you get this one. And it just doesn't have enough green in it. You know, it just doesn't have enough green for my liking. Same with gray. I feel like you need not to have one color. It's, yeah, you need to have some, people call it modulation. I call it irregularities. Otherwise, it just looks like too, too much like, like a toy. All right, so let's do a couple things. First thing we're going to do, we're going to try all this stuff before we experiment. We're going to go right to the back. Can I get the camera to do on the computer to do this? Can we see this? Yes, we can. Okay. Yes, we can. All right. <clears throat> so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put one drop of this Olive Grun Option 2. It's called Olive Grun Option 2. It's funny that they don't give you Option 1. And none of the paint sets seem to have it. I think what it is, is it's this Rosetta is the Option 1. So we're going we're gonna to take a look at what this looks like. We're going to take a look at what this looks like. And then we're going to make our own. And then we're going to use the color that I was using before and see which one of those four I like the best. <clears throat> I, I think I already know the answer to it. But I'm only going to put one drop in here. All right, and this will, uh, let's push this all the way in. This is insane pressure. So let's get this down to about, let's dial this down to about, if I was doing detailed stuff, I'd probably get to about 20, 30 is probably about right, maybe even 25. Okay, let's put this on the handle. Let's take, um, let's go light the dark. Because that makes sense. And this isn't true white. I was looking, I wonder if I, I've got a piece of cardboard that is truly white without using um, an actual canvas. I probably don't. I'm doing this experiment for you guys and for me. When you do these shows, it's best to do it for yourself. Because if you do something for other people, nobody watches it. You're like, fuck, why do I waste my time doing that? But if you do it for yourself, I'm like, well, you know, I'd do it anyways. Just bringing you guys along with me. All right, we're going to take one drop of this Rosetta Green. Literally one spot. And I'm not going to thin it with anything because it's, it's AK. I get a great camouflage scheme, a great camouflage when it's not on anything. Okay, well, I like this pressure. It's a Jesus, it was only one drop. You fizzled out yet? Okay, now we're done. And I'm going to, just for good measure, I'm going to blow this out. Let's do that in between colors. I don't think it's really necessary, but. <clears throat> now we're going to use Olive Grun Option 2. See what I mean? That's way too light. You put that over Dunkel Galbo, it just looks wrong. But yet, that's what they did on the back, they did on the back of these, uh, these vehicles. I like AK paints. I like the fact you don't have to thin them. It just saves 
a lot of time. Yeah, you get less paint, but time's worth it for me. All right, one drop. Unen dropinen. Actually doesn't look that bad. Doesn't look that bad. You gotta remember it's gonna be on. But it's just not green enough. Because I'm also going to, it's gonna get toned down when it gets dry brushed over. So how much more of this we got? Okay, we're out. Okay. Alright, now we're gonna mix one. And we're going to mix using this one and brown. Actually, before I do that, before I do that, let's pull this dark green out. Let's put the cap on it. Well, four people are entertained. <laughs> or feel sympathy for me. I like the fact that none of my shit's staged. It's too much effort. And it's fake. And you know, my, the, the girls love watching this show. I, I want to say it's called Shark Tank, but it's not. It's called, it might just be called Tank. These two guys that make these two guys, I think they're based in Las Vegas, and they do like super fish tanks, you know, and they have them in all different places, and they were watching one the other night because it was at the Tampa airport, and that's kind of local. The whole thing's staged. I mean, the conversations, the content might be real, but it's like, all right, now let's go back and reformulate that as it goes. You know, it's all like rearranged. So it's like, I just, I don't watch reality TV because of that. You know, it's like wrestling. Yeah, those people are really athletes and they're real badasses, but all that stuff is orchestrated. Okay. And so is most things on the internet. Not here, pal. That's too much work. I don't have a producer. All right, this is... This is probably a Russian color. Doesn't matter. Dark green. Just called dark green. And I actually think this is a better color than either one of these two. It's got some gusto to it. I like that color. You know what? I'm not going to use Vallejo. Because Vallejo, I've, I've got to thin it down a little bit. And this thing is spraying so clean here. I don't want to have to reinvent that. I'm not a good enough airbrusher to, to have to clean this thing again. I don't want to do that. I, uh... I admit stuff I'm not good at. If it was like hand painting things with like characters or fake faces or don't poke yourself or um, uh, Cyrillic writing. Yeah, I can do that shit all day long. I've got ultimate confidence in that. I'm studly when it comes to that shit. Airbrushing stuff. Yeah, I'm just a noob. I'm just a freaking noob. 
It's getting better every time, I think. But <laughs> got a, it's a long ass climb. It is a long ass climb. So we're not going to do this here. We're going to mix. We're going to see. They sent us this stuff to the Russian front. So they sent us some Rosetta Green. And me and my Penzer crew decided all we had, I'm going to mix it on here. All we had was some dirty ass oil. So we're going to put some here. And we're going to get some dirty ass oil. Yeah, and mixing stuff on a pallet. Yeah, I've, I've got that shit down. I'm going to put it off here to the side. Because I want to be able to add it little by little. So let's see if this gets us in the right kind of ballpark. Did we just create the same fucking color that was there to begin with? Kind of. So this might be the same green with just some brown paste in it. All right. Well, in, in the spirit experimentation. Oh, now I don't have any water. Damn it, man. Um, we got hand sanitizer. Problem solved. We're going to use this Russian green with the Russian mix. with the Russian brown mix. But I like that green. I really do. I really like that. Remember, it's going to be toned down by dry brushing I do over it. So if it's too dull, it's not even going to look like green. Okay, so we're going to get this green, put some of it over here with some of the brown. I'm gonna spray, I'm gonna spray this green. I'm gonna spray that green because it's gonna get a brown wash afterwards. All right? Let's just wipe this down. I only have to do a good clean on it. We're going to use dark green, MIG 0915. Might actually be a late war German color now that I think about it. It is. Yep. Okay. Where's my where's my coke habit? Here we go. So what do we have to do vehicle wise? Well, got a couple half tracks, three to be precise. First of all, and this one's really, really light. And I did that way on purpose. Okay, so we're gonna take one drop. I think I think I'm just gonna start. I'm just gonna drop one drop at a time. We're gonna do one drop of this dark green and try to airbrush it equivalently thin like this, and just see what happens. And we're going to put the green in between where the red is. Because on one of these, I'm actually going to have them touch, which looks weird. But it happened frequently enough. Kind of like when you look, you do enough heraldry, and then you look at something like the flag of Portugal. Like, then what the hell is the red and the green touching? You know, it's one of those things, like, it just looks odd. You need to not have a a white or a yellow in between them. There's another flag that's the same way. Haiti. Haiti is the same way. Red and, red and blue next to each other with nothing in between. 
All right. Okay. We're still low, about 25 psi. All right. We're done. I gotta be careful because the two halves of this aren't together. Brush painting is so much easier. We go over it a couple times. So it is pretty light, but we're going to do a brown wash over it. I think it's going to look pretty good, honestly. It's really hard to tell. It's really hard to tell. It at Well, I've done enough of these that sometimes like this isn't going to turn out very well, but sometimes you just have to follow through. Yeah, got too thick there. This is sometimes equivalent to like a pistol with a one pound pull. It's like no, no paint coming, no paint coming. Give a little bit more, oh, too much. Yeah. Well, that was an easy fucking fix. Like, oh, got everywhere. Okay, take it off. Done. We out? I'm normally opposed to painting on myself on purpose. But I think it has a purpose, a, a, a point here. Well, it's just, it's just not wanting to do that. It's just not wanting to do that well, is it? I wonder what percentage of my people that watch my channel are actually just, not lurkers, but they're actually just bots. I don't know that there is such a thing like that, but 
I mentioned some things at the beginning of the show that most people would have been like, oh, well, we want to know more about that. But what I'm getting at is, I got some airplane models coming over this weekend, two to be precise. One of them was just too cheap, and I'm getting it tomorrow. And the other one is the first plane I should do. 172nd, of course. Why would I do a different scale other than that? That would be, that would be a senile moment for me. I think other than this, I should take pictures of before I paint this and then what it looks like afterwards. Because you just, and I do that not to toot my own horn, but just to prove that sometimes you can't be discouraged. Things start like, this isn't going to turn out well. Stick with it. Just stick with it and it'll turn out just fine. Stick with it, damn it. I think I'm going to leave this just like that. I think I'm gonna leave this just like that. Okay, now the other ones. I'm gonna use a different green. I'm gonna use the green that they say I should use. Let's get that green out. I mean, I'll even blow it out. Should have done that in here. It's just bad habit. I'm I'm new to actually using this. I painted all at the old house without having one of these things to spray into. And it was pretty hot outside. And it's not hot in the garage. It's one of those things I'm wondering how it's going to be here in the summertime. I think it'll just be fine. I got a fan here. It's not even on. And I'm the first person to get warm. I got all this insulation. You know, here. I'm still a gamer size medium. You know what I'm talking about. Um, right. Let's use the color they say you're supposed to use. Put two drops in there. Woohoo! Living life on the edge. This is kind of an antenna that's going to have to be replaced. How good this look depended on the ability of the particular guy in one to one scale. Because there were a lot of folks that they would say probably would be a worse artist than Hitler was. I don't think Hitler was that bad an artist. He's better than fucking Picasso. I don't really like Hitler's style. I'd say Hitler is a better artist than he was a dictator. <laughs> Certainly a better artist than a military commander. The Woman Slayer. What's this? 
What's the sacrifice tonight? Two redheads and a blonde? Are your woman slaying days over with? Are you, are you, are you, are you married? I remember, I don't know if you ever, you ever told me. I would hate to be dating now. I would, I wouldn't find anybody. <laughs> I have to find somebody really old. <laughs> I think the main issue with his paintings are they're too bland. Fair enough. Yeah, it's like watercolor without like meaning. Yeah. Often shadows are inconsistent. That's what the school told him. Well, I hate Picasso. And people will come to his defense. Well, he knew how to paint. He just decided to do it a different way. That's like saying, I can make it to the bathroom, but I decide to shit my pants just for fun. You know? No. Do the best you can all the time. All the fucking time. Do the best you can. Instead of being a mediocre painter, he turns into a shit-ass dictator. Is there any other kind? No, there really isn't. Dictator. All right, so now we've got, here's our two greens. I don't mind them being different, honestly. Let's see if I can get the light here so you guys can And what the hell are we going to do with the last one? Well, we could just not do any of the color, do any of the green. There's that. Hold on. Ah, oh, crap. I forgot to put live chat. I had it on top chat. What I miss somebody? That's one way to look at it. <laughs> yeah, not a Picasso fan. And he was a communist. Fuck him. I don't like the Nazi guys either. I'm just saying, you know. Okay. Panzerkampfwagen. Whatever four is. I don't speak German. I speak Blitz Blitzkrieg German. So I only know those Blitzkrieg tag words. By the way... By the way, uh, Wolf, the, um, the classified 44 is interesting. It's interesting. I've been, I've been playing it. I've been playing like in the mornings. It's not bad. Not enough to be like, oh, I can't go to work. This is too exciting, but quite a bit down from that. Let's blow this thing out. Once again, I should have blown it in there. I didn't. I'm going to keep making mistakes. Maybe you can come watch my channel and be like, man, at least I don't make as many mistakes as Tony does. It's true. They don't upset me, though. They upset me when I make mistakes at work, in the hobby. Everything's good here. So nobody wants to know what paints, what, what planes I got coming? Well, hell with y'all. I'm not telling you. One of them will be here tomorrow. <laughs> no, they're not Japanese planes. They should be. But, um, no, I flat out got one simply because it was less than $8 shipped to me. It was less than freaking $8. <clears throat> and 
And the only thing I don't like about that plane is that I want to do more unusual ones. And that's not an unusual plane by any stretch of the imagination. You turned out a nine-man squad of 15-millimeter late war Brits tonight in two hours. Going to roll and getting a platoon done by Sunday and order some Brit AFVs. Might even pick up the Vallejo set. Um, late war Brits. You doing Italy or you doing Northwest Europe? Which planes are they all the way? No, you didn't ask. I had to say, why didn't you ask? What do you think they are? There we go. Now, I'm going to tell you what the, what the teaser to it is, okay? Um, one of the planes is just, was just too cheap. It was just too cheap. It's like $8 shipped to me. And um, I don't think I have built that version of it before. I built a version of it, and, um, but, I haven't built, but I haven't built that one before. And, uh, and the other one is the first plane I ever built. So, um, so if you've been paying attention, you should know what that, you should know what the second one is. Italy. Nah, I wish. It's not any planes that would, so I was like, I want to do a plane. So what, what plane would be useful for my skirmish gaming? A Lysander, Right. They're too expensive. They're like $23 or something like that. I'm like, I'm not saying I'm not going to buy one. I'm just, sometimes when things are of a certain price, you're like, nah, I don't need it that bad. You know? I mean, if you need something, you go out and get it. But you're like, ah, I feel an itch to build a plane. 20, throwing $25 at something isn't scratching an itch. That's just a little bit more than that. And, you know, I like being frugal sometimes because it keeps, it keeps you, it keeps you well-grounded in reality. You can't just go out and buy everything you want all the time, or next thing you know, it doesn't have any value. Oh, we still have long drink left? All right. Cheers. So what's the first plane I ever built? It has a few hundred die-cast planes. Die-cast would be okay, too. But I gotta paint them. Okay. What are we gonna do with the Kursk Panzer IV, H. Let's um let's do something stupid. I know you were hoping I'd say that. He also has Mobile War II pill and box on a flatbed outside his house. Really? In England? I think the the constable might want to know about that. He's not that guy that lives over in, what was the name of that? Is it Sealand? The Republic of Sealand. Like he sells that, you know. I forgot what the proportions are here. I'm going to do. No, I'm not. Yeah, I am. One. Two. Three. And I'm going to do one of this. I just don't have any pipettes or anything like that. You just waste so much freaking paint when you do that. I'm going to do one of this. Let's see what we get. Neither plane is Axis. I have no problem painting Axis planes. Neither plane happens to be Axis. I would have... Perfectly happy painting a zero or something like that. They just, they weren't eight dollars. That looks almost the same fucking color. Did they not mix well? There we go. We're starting to get a little bit more depth there. Soviet. No! One's American, one's British. One seventy second scale. All right. Here goes everything.
I would have built the Soviet planes. It's just purely based on price. Now the only thing about the inexpensive plane is that it only comes with markings for one plane. Otherwise, I would have bought like three of them, which I could have done and just bought a decal set. Que pasó? We get a jam session on here? There we go. I really wanted to build, if price wasn't an issue, I really wanted to build a Nate. KI, whatever the fuck it is. I don't know this Japanese number. KI 27, Nate. Actually, the color didn't mix well, so it came out earlier. I, one color and now it's coming out a different one and I actually like the fact that that happened a Spitfire yes a Spitfire from Airfix it was eight dollars it was 797 delivered in one day I'm like how can I not build a Spitfire I actually wanted to build unusual stuff and the Spitfire is not unusual by any stretch of the imagination but I am a Spitfire fan And the other one's the first plane I've ever built. I don't know if I've built a Spit... I definitely haven't built a Spitfire 1. <laughs> I think the one I built was a 9 or a 14. I have a feeling it was a 14. What the heck is the crack with that rocket thing the Krauts tried to build that carried a pilot and 12, 12 rockets? Bloody Wunderwaffe. Well, are you talking about the one that launched vertically? It's called like a Drackel or something like that? Yeah, that, that's weird. I mean, the, the, the comment's weird enough. You know, like, we give you sled, you know, one sled to land on, you know. Try to keep that thing level or you're going to turn into a lawn dart. But, you know, dead Nazi, you know, not that big a loss. <laughs> um, Draken, something like that. Yeah, it's like it looks like the 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 space shuttle. It's attached to something and it gets launched vertical or something like that. Dornier 335 is weird enough as it is. That's that push, that, that push pull thing. That was actually a really fast plane. But I don't mind building unusual things. I just don't like building something they only made like two of. You know? Yeah, it, it looks. It looks cute. It almost looks like a bat. Can you picture like a fruit bat? It looks like a fruit bat. It looks like a fruit bat with its wings closed up. There's just some kind of a... Oh, how could they be the bad guys? They got cute vehicles. There's still Nazi bastard inside. There's still a totalitarian bastard inside.
I don't like totalitarians of any flavor. The poor Creek's Marine never gets any one to offer people a bit more. Yeah, I don't like those late war U-boats. A U-boat, I hate U-boats without a deck gun. Sorry. I don't like U-boats without a deck gun. Type 7 U-boat's good. Type 9 U-boat looks good. H-44 class battleships would have been insane to see. I prefer battleships with one funnel. As a general rule, they look better. Now, the Japanese get that aircraft carry sub some people like to model. So I was reading about that, the, the Syrian, the say, say, I don't know. They pronounce it things differently. Say it on. Okay, whatever, dude. <laughs> uh, that's a good looking plane. That is a really good looking plane. Um, armed only with the tail gunner, with one machine gun. Well, they only made a handful of them, like three dozen of them or something like that. That's a, that is a attractive plane. There's a lot of attractive planes. And what I find a plane is attractive and how good it actually performed are two totally different things. Some of the most unattractive aircraft, in my opinion, of the Second World War were some of the most effective aircraft in the Second World War. I don't know anybody who dislikes the look of a Hellcat more than me. I just don't like them. I don't like them. You know, I used to think the same way about a P-47. I've come around, um, you know, Air Cobras, I think they look cool. It's nice that they have a door, not a good aircraft. The Russians liked it, but you know, they're hopped up on vodka all the time. <laughs> for the Jap, for the, for the, for the Russians to like it, it just has to be better than a Russian aircraft early war. That's, you know, that's not too difficult. That's not a, that's not a big ask. Uh, the Japanese aircraft I think is very attractive is, uh, I think it's the Nick. It's a two engine fighter. It's a good looking plane. But the Japanese have a whole host of ugly planes. You know, but looks are in the eye of the beholder because some people love that Japanese, that, uh, that observation aircraft the Germans called the, is it the Yuhu? The Uhu? The Falkwolf 180, I think it's a Falkwolf 189. I think it's ugly as sin. Just about all the German ships are attractive, in my opinion. Speaking of ships. Unfortunately, most of this is going to end up.
blurred out. By the time I do the dry brushing on it. So I might have to go over some of this with an actual brush. And we have yet another green. It helps if I put it somewhere you guys can see. I gotta get on my producer. I don't know if I'm gonna do red on this one. It kinda looks good just like that. Although I, I think I'm gonna go over it and make it a little heavier because otherwise it's just gonna end up disappearing. So we're gonna do another batch of this. One, two, three and uh, one of the Russian brown. Never used an airbrush. I'm new, I'm new at it. I always did it by hand, too. I really got the airbrush in seriousness. The reason I got the airbrush was to prime and seal. Basically to make up for the fact that rattle cans aren't worth a damn anymore. And they're stinky. And I'm a hell of a lot better at it. I'm a hell of a lot better. I mean, it's not even close. It's not even, I'm, I'm out of, you know, this is fish out of water right here. All right, let's take a look at this, the top of this and see. Let's lose, let's lose the turret. Thicken them up a little bit. Not thicken them up, but to make the color heavier. Paint, damn it, paint. See, I don't have issues like this with a paintbrush.
I think we're going to leave it as is. I'm not going to. I don't need to do the red brown in with it. I've got. Yeah, I don't have one. It's just this color. Okay. Now. I swear I've also seen a catamaran style World War One biplane somewhere. Just glue them together. It'll be... I don't know. I need a. I need a bump from that. Give me a heart bump. <laughs> I can't. I don't want to touch my computer right now. That wouldn't be bad. I don't have any plans to replace my computer for, for quite some time. Actually, I never have any plans to replace my computer. But one day it may just like not work. Then we'll have to replace it. We've got two vehicles left, and I'm a little hesitant to do them because they turned out so well, and they're just in yellow. And that is, this thing, this thing is a, as basic as this thing is, this is a work of art. This vehicle with the, with the Zimmerit on it. It's a Panther A from Plastic Soldier Company. Just really beautiful model. And here's the Cromwell Tiger 1. Now this thing's got to have three color. This one has two. Um... You know, and I want it to be little, little pattern, three color. They both have Zimmerit on it. Tony Montana bump. <laughs> worst, worst Cuban accent I've ever heard in my entire fucking life. I do a better Italian accent than he does a Cuban accent. I actually can't do a Cuban accent. <clears throat> my dad could. <laughs> very realistic, very convincing. Oh, man. I don't know what the hell I'm going to do with the Panther. I don't know what I'm going to do with the Panther. I could paint it like an SS Viking where they did the, like the straight things, but that doesn't look right. I might just leave it yellow. We're not leaving the Tiger yellow, though. No, we got to screw this thing up. Seems like every time you see a Pacino movie, he gets crazier and crazier as he gets older. I'm not a big fan of him. I'm not a big fan of these New York, New York-y type act act actors. That's just not America to me. <gasps> what can you say? That's not New York, you know? Just like wherever you are in England, I'm sure there's people in the UK that speak a certain way and that's not what people are like and wherever you're from. Um, what am I looking for? Ah. So, Tiger One, let's look at some photos. Hell with it. Let's look at some photos. Weird having a phone that I have to take the, the, um, put a code in to open it. That living history chap said he talked to ex-German tanks in the past. They said they usually had better things to do than put camel on. Good enough excuse for me to leave them plain. That's true. Like, hide from, like, put shrubbery on them. I'm sure shrubbery is a hell of a lot more effective, you know? Das, das you bump. Schnell! Okay, um, Blitzkrieg German. 
Uh, Tiger One. I'm not a Tiger One fan. Tiger One camo scheme. Well, that's not what I came looking for. Tiger One, Tiger One tank. I was watching something the other day and like, oh, they have Panzer tanks. Like, I'm not even going to comment on that. Okay, so here's one that was attached to Gross Deutschland. Yeah, something like that. One of those two. Well, I like this make-believe mix that I made. We're going to make it again. One, two, three, four, five, six to two. I just want more quantity in there. I'm very partial to the German World War I ships as opposed to their British um, adversaries. But when it comes to World War II, I like the Brits in World War II. They're cool. The, the Brits in World War I just, you don't have any camouflage scheme and, and the German ships look more wicked. Same thing, here we go. Exactly over it. Come on. Now, I do not think I can, I can live with myself if I leave the spare tracks on the side of this turret painted yellow. So I'm going to make them look like they're tracks. I will have trouble sleeping at night if I did such a thing. And I've had this this model a long time 
I've waited until I got a half a clue how to paint these things before I started messing with this beautiful model. Because this thing is gorgeous. It has nothing to do with the fact that it's a Tiger One. It just it's it's just has crisp, crisp detail on this Cromwells. Unfortunately, it's 176th. Which means it's going to look just as big as a Panzer IV and 172nd. Okay, let's go over this green now that we've got this darker one. Come on. See, that went, look, got way too big on that. But you know what? I'm going to dry brush over it, and that might actually like, that might actually be the thickness that I actually like the most. I think that's enough of that. We need to switch to the, um, no. We'll put some red brown in there now, or actually chocolate brown. We would have called it red brown. I'm gonna leave the panther yellow for now. Just yellow. I got an, I got another one. I just haven't built it yet. Now, one thing I haven't tried is Vallejo Air. I, I just like not having to add thinner. You don't need to with this stuff. All right. Chocolate brown now. Vallejo Air will go through the airbrush without thinner. Okay. So it's it's just like the MIG stuff. Problem is it dries the needle and nozzle. Use some retarder. Three ought to do it. The hardest part is, honestly, it's this, is this, is this, um, pulling back on this and not pulling back too much. Like that. What'd you do? Come back when I was done with the, wasn't doing the Puma?
remember more more is a little bit better because when we dry brush it it's sometimes you lose a lot of these a lot of this color like the hummel that i did i have these awesome little squigglies you can't even see them Yeah, the older guys in the model meeting, they're not super keen on airbrushing. Now, this looks kind of rough, but I think, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to look, I think it's going to look good. I know it'll look good. Purposefully not having them overlap a little bit. drop this and meet this one here at the base okay go all the way to this side but we definitely want the camouflage to be visible on this thing Okay, and I think I'm gonna leave the panther in yellow, the first panther in yellow. And I specifically went hard on this because I'm gonna have to do a lot of subtle dry brushing over that zimmerit to make it come out right. We definitely wanna have enough color there that I ended up not covering over it. I have to use a retarder, I bought it. Now what am I gonna do with it if I don't use it for that? Waste of money. Waste of money is like airbrush thinner. That's a waste of money. Or airbrush cleaner. Psst. Waste of money. And you're literally pissing that out. Well, the airbrush is anyways. I may change my mind on the Panther, but it actually turned out really well. The other night, I kind of did a little bit of a Zenithal look to it. Kind of hard to tell here, but it's lighter towards the top. So we're going to try that. Of course, with the, with the wash, it's anybody's guess how it's going to turn out. So, but the stuff that I washed ended up turning out really well, the margers and so forth. <clears throat> really happy with how those turned off, turned out. So that's going to be it for today's session. So we've got... We've got some different greens that we used. And then we didn't do any green on this one. The pens are 4H. Just green. And the triad on the Tiger one. And we'll see well, that takes us. We'll be ready to do... Um, I think I should have a painting show on Saturday morning. I should. We may go somewhere. I hope it's not super early. I don't want to lose... I, I hate losing my painting show. Okay, folks. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you guys on the next one. And uh, look out for those plane unboxings. Um, we'll be having those coming up soon. All right, folks. See you.